Crafters, welcome back. My name is Catherine, and today we're gonna talk about some beginner project ideas. It may not surprise you, but in order to become a better programmer, you have to program. You may have heard of tic-tac-toe, rock, paper, scissors, flipping a coin. These are pretty simple programs that a lot of people do as their first program in that programming language. And they're often your go-to beginner projects. These games, along with Connect Four, a word guessing game, Mad Libs, all of these have really concrete and defined rules. So when you're looking to practice with a given programming language, look for something that's concrete. You don't wanna have to worry about the rules of your game while you're trying to program that game. The whole point of a beginner programming project is to implement something that's already known in code. I recommend starting with a text-based program. So this is either something you just run in your IDE or you can run in your command line. It doesn't need to have this beautiful interface and these pretty buttons or this beautiful art. Another option is to implement an algorithm or something that has a defined series of steps with a result. So one algorithm you could implement in your given programming language is you have a list of students and you need to sort them into pairs. Or not really sort, but you just need to put them into pairs. How do you go about that? Part of it is architecting a solution of like, okay, I'm going to pull one student from each end of the list and then that's gonna be a pair. And then I'll remove them and then I'll add the other two at the other end. Another algorithm you could create is a random number generator. So this would be something that maybe you're trying to create a lottery with your program. Everyone gets a number, your program decides what's the winning number. How do you do that in your programming language of choice? When you're thinking of a beginner programming project, you don't have to build this huge glorious thing. The goal is to get practice coding so you can become a better programmer. So it could be something as small as an algorithm or you could go out and build checkers or a more enhanced game. Another thing you can do is actually create something using the data from an API. API, Application Programming Interface. I have another video about what that is but essentially you're taking data from another person's program and you're putting it into your program and that can inform what you build. So say you found a random fact generator API. So this API, when you call it or when you use the API, it gives you a random fact. You could use this API and the data it's giving you, parse it and create something from it. So say you need to work with JavaScript and you're trying to learn JavaScript. You could create a website that displays a random fact of the day, essentially taking what the other programmer did and inserting it into your own program. While that may seem a little bit like a copy-paste, it's actually pretty tricky when you start working with APIs in a given programming language. You have to learn how to call the API, you have to learn how to ingest the data from that API, and it's a very common task that comes into play, especially when you start working as a software developer. Your team isn't going to code everything for the company. Your team will like likely have to use data from other teams in order to build whatever it is. Or on the other hand, you might be on one of the teams that's providing data to another team and you need to learn how to send it, format it, work with the other team. There's lots of things, but likely you're gonna work with APIs at some point in your career. So I suggest find a free API to use and create something from it. Another option is, I know YouTube has an API, but you could build something that shows the top YouTube comments from your or YouTube channel. It could be a little website or a console or something that pings YouTube and sees what is the most liked comment under all of your videos. Most companies out there, like Yelp, any tech company really, has some API you can use in order to interact with that other program. It could be something that returns data. I'm sure there is an API that Uber has created to call an Uber. There are lots of different things, but it's another interface you can use to interact with another company's or another developer developer's product. Another option if you're looking for a programming project is to build something using a library. So your programming language actually has a built-in standard library, like Python's is called the Python standard library, of course below. Java has built-in functions, and so there's literally so many. Built-in Java. There's a whole java.util library, or they call it a package, basically the same thing, but it has 
all of these different classes with all of this built-in functionality that you can just import and use. For example, they have a math class where you can do math.random, math.sign, math.cosine, a lot of those basic mathematical functions are already built into Java so you don't have to implement them. Part of learning a given programming language is learning what's available in that language that you don't have to code. While you could create literally everything that's in the standard library and code that all up yourself, why would you? If someone else has already done it, then you should just use what they built. Plus, a lot of the things that are in that standard library are super well tested, basically guaranteed to work. Your code, probably not as well tested. But let's say you wanted to build something, you need to practice coding, you want to build a new project, take something from one of these classes and use it to build something. So in the example of math, you could build your own calculator application. And so you could use what's in the math class, call the various things you need to call in order to build a more robust calculator. So you could do a calculator that just adds, subtracts, multiplies, that's kind of boring, with the functionality from the math class that's built into Java. And likely there's a version of this in whatever programming language you're using. But you could use that functionality so that you don't have to write an absolute value function. It's all built in for you. And you might be thinking like, okay, if all of this is built in and I'm just using other people's code, am I actually learning how to code? And the answer is yes because most of coding isn't actually writing your own code, it's reusing things that other people have made and making them work for your own purposes. So after you've learned something from that built-in library, it's time to explore, explore what's out in the world. And another thing you need to learn how to use is a package manager. So in Java, this is Maven or Gradle. In Node, mm, Node's not a language, but okay, you're using JavaScript, but if you're gonna use the Node platform, NPM is your package manager. If you're using Python, pip is your package manager. And like, what are these packages? What are you managing? You're managing these libraries. So the next step is to now not only use things that are built into Java or into your programming language, it's to go on to the internet and learn what external libraries exist for your programming language. So for Python, there's NumPy, there's Pandas. These are all external libraries not built into Python that you can download or use pip to install. And once they're installed, you can use them in your code. These are things that other developers have written in order to make it easier to do certain applications. And so for NumPy and Pandas, these are great for statistics, machine learning-ish type of things. Matplotlib, that's another Python package. This makes it easy to plot graphs, do certain mathematical operations. Most of the time, whatever you're programming, you're not gonna use pure, they call it pure vanilla JavaScript. And so that means you're not using any external libraries. Most of the time, you're not doing that you are not doing vanilla anything. You've got a hundred different dependencies in your program installed from all these package managers and you need to know how to use them so that you can create whatever your program is. And the reason you would have all these packages is because they provide value by doing some of the things that you could code, but you don't really wanna code. Like you, the code you wanna write is custom code for your example or for your application. You wanna write the calculator application. And if this library has some nice mathematical functions, you definitely wanna use those in building whatever your app is. Half the time, you're just leveraging someone else's code in order to write whatever you're building. Keeping that in mind, most of the time, you're not building a hello world application in the real world. Rather, you're adding features, fixing bugs, you're working with code that already exists. So why do all of these tutorial things teach you how to build something from scratch? In reality, you're never doing that. In reality, you're working with some legacy code base that someone wrote a long time ago and you're having to deal with the code they wrote and fix it or add something new to it. Often, which is not compatible, besides the point. So how do you get practice doing something like that? You've built maybe a few beginner projects, you've built the checkers, you've built the tic-tac-toe, you've built the Mad Libs program. Well, you go on to GitHub. All right, so maybe you know about GitHub, but if you do not, one thing you can do is search for other people's projects and try to understand them. So sometimes working on a beginner programming project does not mean build it yourself. It means try to understand someone else's code. So let's just search Java and see what comes up. So Java is my language. I want to learn more about Java. Algorithms. 
in Java. We can go check out that. Can, we somehow got some other things in here so we can actually switch our language to just Java and try to look for something that is interesting to implement. Most of it won't be. In fact, one of these programming projects we talked about is tic-tac-toe. So what would happen if we searched tic-tac-toe and then filtered by Java, we can see other people's implementations of this program. So I would suggest implementing your own version of tic-tac-toe first or your own version of rock, paper, scissors, and then filter by our Java language. We can see how other people did it. And this is important because it gives you a little bit of perspective of how other people might program. So let's go into, this one's like a starter project. So you could try to get some curriculum from these colleges and work on that. Since a lot of it's on GitHub, free education there. But let's take a look at this person. So homework in class. If this is actually your homework and you have to code rock, paper, scissors for your assignment, don't just look on GitHub for someone else's implementation. So it kind of looks like maybe some of this isn't implemented. Let's look at the algorithms. So these are a bunch of math algorithms. So it looks like this person literally implemented everything that's in the Java library. So here we have a number of digits. And so this is something that someone's created and it's actually a pretty common interview question where when given a number, tell me how many digits there are. So are there 10 digits? Are there one digits? One common solution is, oh, I'm gonna convert this into a string and then do dot length. But a lot of interviewers will be like, no, that's too easy. I don't want you to use any string operations. Use purely mathematic principles in order to tell me how many digits there are. So what this person did is they divide the number by 10. Because if you think of how you add an additional digit to a given number, usually you multiply it by 10 and that would give it another zero. So however many times you can divide it by 10, that's how many digits you would have. Now you might not be familiar with that algorithm or that strategy, but that's why you would look at this person's code. And so you can look and see like, how did they figure that out? And so here they took a series of numbers and then they have a series of assertion statements that would fail if it didn't work. And so instead of printing something out to the console, this person said, assert the number of digits at i, which would start at zero, so that's zero, equals zero plus one. So this has one digit. And they kind of did some weird mathy stuff in getting all of this, and then they have a couple different implementations of it. But let's download it, let's run it, let's see what happens. And so say like, this is a cool project someone's done and I wanna download it. You could go learn about Git and do the whole Git clone, make your own branch, add a new feature. We're just gonna download it in a zip because this I find is very simple. We'll drag it into the desktop and we'll just open it with IntelliJ. Now this is a pretty beefy project. So we'll see how importing it goes. So we were looking in that maths folder. So now that it's in my IDE, I can actually mess with it, try to break it, try to add new features. That's another way to go. So here, if I wanted to see what the implementation of recursion was or the number of digits, I can just click into it and it brings me right to that functionality. So that's kind of nice when you import it into your IDE. Another thing you can do is for this like simpler implementation, I could actually put a breakpoint here and try to understand what's going on. So let's try to run this person's program. And instead of doing all these assertion statements, I'm just gonna edit it so I can actually see what's going on. So something I can do is we can go debug. I'm gonna add a breakpoint right here at the digits. And basically what this does is it iterates through the list and then finds the number of digits. We don't really save the result or print it to the console. Here, our breakpoint stopped. And so this line has not been executed yet where if we hit the next button, it will. Hence, digits is incremented. And it's actually pretty interesting what is happening here because in order to call this function, you have to have at least one digit. You can't call this function as with an int that has zero digits. Like zero digits doesn't exist for numbers. So that's good. We're making sure this person's code works and that it makes sense. That's another type, although it's not considered a programming project, this is a strategy you can use to also become a better programmer. Another thing you can do is actually add features to this. So say there was another, like for area, here it's using the surface area of a cube, a sphere, 
maybe there's another shape or another cylinder, another thing that you want to create the area for or create that functionality, kind of going back to our discussion of algorithms. You want to add an algorithm to this implementation that would make the program bigger and better. That's something that's a pretty common programming task, especially as you start to intern or become a software developer. The program doesn't have to be yours. It's actually more impressive if you say in your interviews or on your you know resume that you actually contributed to a project that's hosted on GitHub. So a lot of these open source projects, what you can do is pull them down from GitHub, add a feature, and then submit the code for review. That's a whole other video, but that's another way if you're a beginner software developer to really try to get into the code and understand what's going on. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This was super fun to make and I hope to see you again soon. Happy coding.